and welcome back. We're at the last stage. The loader, this is it. We've got an it out, out, it was produced. What do we do? So let's take a look at the picture. Where are we now? The compiler's worked, now I've got a dot .s. The assembler did its work, I've got a dot .o. The linker has worked, I've got an a dot .out or an executable, hopefully renamed, don't have your function be called a dot .out, have it go, give, it, give it a good name, but I've linked it all those libraries, I've done it statically linked, we talked about other options, but I've done it statically. Now I have a standalone working executable. How do I run this darn thing? It's in disk. How do I get this thing running? That's at the job of the loader. So let's talk about that. I gotta load it into memory and then run this whole thing. So the input is executable code, a dot .out or some well better name for it. The output is the program is actually running. Executables on disk, we know that, okay? The loader's job is to load it into memory and set up all that needs to set up and start it running. And in reality, the loader is actually the OS. That's, we've seen that before, and that's actually one of the tasks. If you take 162, you learn all about what loaders do. You say, oh, I, I learned that. There was a reference to this. They said the loader's job is to run the program. How do you actually do that? They'll teach you it as an explicit lecture of what, this, what happens. So this is one slide. It's a lot on the slide, but this is one slide. It's all the pieces. Let's actually go through one by one what it does. Okay, I've got a header file. I know from the header how big things are, how big the text is, how big the data is, okay? I create a new address space. We'll see this a little later. We haven't learned this by, uh, virtual memory at all. You think you have two to the 32 space. Well, you don't really, but for now you do. It creates a new address space for the program, large enough, so I give it some space. You don't really give it two to the 32, but pretend you do for now, to be able to store all the text and all the data, okay? along with a little bit of stack, so a little bit of room. So I give it a little stack, I give it, so I basically make some room. Remember, you keep thinking that I get the whole two to the 32, but I'm gonna, I don't really, but for now you do, but okay, so you get enough for the text, the data, and stack for now, because I'm using it more, and as you need more, you'll get more. But for now, you have it all, and it just puts room for that, okay? So this is a little weird to understand that line, because I haven't taught you about virtual memory yet. I now copy. I gotta read from disk, and write it into memory. I copy that stuff, the instructions, the text, the data, whatever data you had from the executable into that address space. <laughs> Fill it in. Now this, now this memory can, it contains a copy of what was in on the disk. Got that. What arguments were there to the program? You might have command line arguments. I gotta copy those to the stack. Why in the stack? I don't know how big they'll be. I don't just put them into, the, into registers. They might be really big. I might have a huge long file name. It might be much bigger than my registers can handle. So I copy all of them to the stack. Whatever command line arguments, on the stack, ready to go. I gotta initialize my machine registers. Mostly we treat our machine registers as, um, as being cleared, even though you're, well, come on, Dan, did you say that we don't ever clear things in C? Yeah, but when you start a new program, sometimes you clean these guys. So let's clear the set, set the registers up. Um, most of them are cleared. Stack pointer is obviously ass assigned the address of the first free stack location. You gotta set up SP for the right thing. And assume you clear the rest of the registers. And now finally, this is it, last point bullet on, the on this slide for the loader. I jump to a starter routine, it's kind of complicated, but you'll see this in 162, that copies the program arguments from the stack to the registers. What might they be? What's the argument to main? arg c and arg v. So that sounds like that's a0 and a1. a0 is arg c, a1 is arg v, a pointer to that place where they, where they live on the stack, but all of that, the value of arg c is here in a0, arg v pointer lives in a1. That's it. And now, set the PC to the right place, yoink, go. If the main routine, re routine returns, it terminates this with a, with a system call. Whatever the return value is, pass that back up to the, so this is important. If you exit zero, that exit zero has to somehow bubble its way up so that that is what the program returns is the zero. That's it. That's what the loader does. The loader is basically OS, which does all those things, essentially copies things to memory, sets up the registers, sets up the stack, points, you know, passes an argc argv, says a PC, your line is the first line of main, ready, go. And just whatever, whatever magic happens, happens as soon as it does that. Pretty cool, right? That's it. That's the compiler, assembler, linker, and loader. Let's see an example in the next lecture. We'll see you there.